All right, so shoot a different video today. I got Isis, my partner in crime here. If you wondered why all our social media has changed, this is the mastermind behind <laughs> it. Yeah, she's making it look good. Uh, but today uh, we are doing a presentation for new agents uh, and we're teaching them about the home inspection process. And uh, this is out actually a, a statement for new home inspectors or home inspectors getting into doing presentations. Always remember, it doesn't matter what's in your presentation or what's in your PowerPoint or whatever you're talking about. It's people won't buy your business for what's in that PowerPoint. They're gonna buy your business because of what what you say or being likable or people buy business from people not from what's in your PowerPoint so I uh, heard that this morning and I thought that kind of reflected about what I'm doing so I thought I should share but uh, today we're just gonna go in there and we're gonna try to record the whole thing and uh, learn from it or yep. or just <laughs> give me a thumbs up, give me a thumbs up <laughs> right and hit that subscribe button all right so uh, we're gonna knock it out got anything to say I'm excited it should be fun <laughs> yeah all right marketing stick <laughs> so, really if you take anything out of this class this is the only spot you need to listen I know a little bit about everything when it comes to the home inspection world to the legal side to uh, um, doing the home inspection creating the process or even the business or understanding how other home inspection companies operate so this class isn't just about my business, it's just about home inspections in general, just kind of what to expect. Uh, I've been in practicing home inspections for seven years. Uh, my first year in business, I only did about 155 jobs. And then after that, um, at the end of my seven years, my company just this year should hit about 2,000 jobs. So people, no one liked the product that we produce. And right here, I'm just gonna teach you what to kind of expect of what home inspectors are gonna show up on. Uh, generational home inspector, my father is Brian Murphy. Uh, he sat on the board of uh, Trek for several years, so he even helped create the rules and regulations when it comes to home inspection. So if you have any home inspection question, I should be able to answer it. And if I don't know, I know who to go ask, right? <laughs> uh, easy, easy phone call for me. Uh, so that being said, uh, this is kind of like just a really quick crash course into home inspections, and I kind of leave it open you know, free. So at any point in time, you like, if you want to ask a question about a certain topic, or you have a problem in your own home, or you know, anything like that, just just ask, and I can. Uh, we'll just dive into that topic. Uh, so that being said, this is an introduction to home inspections, and uh, when with home inspections, uh, what you're really going to expect is there's several different types. So there's a typical resale inspection, and that's the one that you're going to deal with on most of the time. A buyer puts in an offer on a home and then after that buyer puts in an offer uh, you hire a home inspection or you suggest a home inspector to come out and tell you everything wrong with it and that is what you're going to deal with say 98 percent of the time the the next one is a pre-listing inspection this is actually more popular in other states it hasn't really taken traction in texas but some people do do it and it can be used to help protect you too as well the biggest case where i really see it coming in to affect is during like estate sales or uh, someone believes their house is perfect and you walk in and you know it's not and you don't want to be the one that tells them that it's not and uh, a lot of people do save money this way too because if I come in and on a pre-listing inspection before it's even under contract or on the market and I say hey you need to get these things fixed they can get it fixed however they like right but if I come on the pre the resale inspection I come on the the normal side you have to hire a licensed electrician whoever to fix these items so you can actually get it done at a discounted rate instead of having the keys master level people knock out just to replace a GFCI really anyone can do replace a GFCI but if the GFCI is broken you have to get an, a licensed electrician to fix it if you do a resale inspection um, that will be part of the amendment and then you have the new construction. Yes, new constructions, I find stuff every time. I think there's only been on one new build since I've ever been doing home inspections where I didn't find anything and I was a new home inspector. So, that, <laughs> so, so you know, that being said, I probably missed something in uh, being in the field. So 
It, it's very uh, it's very unlikely that a home inspector goes out there on a new build, especially today. I feel like the longer I've been in the industry, the worse and worse we're getting because in Houston, they're just throwing them up. I mean, really, really fast. So it's always recommended to do the, uh, the three phases. Before I was even not even talking about doing the pre-pour inspection and just the other day, I went out there and it wasn't deep enough. And nobody would have known until the slab cracked, you know, 10 years or 15 years down the line. So I do always recommend all three phases and the three phases that come along with that new build inspection is right before they pour the concrete, uh, right before they put in uh, the, uh, the, the insulation, sorry, so they have all the plumbing, the framing, the electrical in. And so, but if they put in that insulation, they start covering stuff up and I can't see anything. And then the final one is, I like to be there during your, uh, right before your blue tape walkthrough or during your blue tape walkthrough because I can help mark things or you can have a day to mark things and then you get to go back and you get to mark some more things uh, right before the blue tape walkthrough. And that's always my favorite thing to do is give clients blue tape <laughs> because if you give them blue tape, man, they go crazy with it. And it's, it's, we have some good YouTube videos of that uh, too as well. And then the, the last final ones right here, uh, commercial insurance, FHA, HUD, and remodeling consultations. Those are outside of TREC uh, in inspections. So those are a different type of inspections. So actually with a commercial building inspection, you don't need a license at all to inspect it. James is now a real estate professional and a commercial building inspector. So, <laughs> so just you wanna keep that in mind. You don't need a license to do it. So you wanna at least, if someone is hiring to get a commercial building inspection, if you're part of that deal, you wanna make sure that they have some sort of license or some sort of experience dealing with commercial building inspections, uh, which is kind of scary. That I, there's actually several things in the market that's like that. Uh, commercial buildings, septic systems, foundation repair companies, all roofers don't need licenses, not regulated. Um, and remodeling companies, general contractors, not regulated. So anyone can do any type of work to a home well, under general contracting in Texas. So um, kind of the purpose of the inspection is it's a performance-based inspection. We like to come out there, tell you if things are working or if they're not, if they're safe or if they're not. And then also uh, we like to give you the age of the equipment and we also uh, the biggest five components of the property, the foundation, the structure, the electrical, heating, and the plumbing. Those are the big ticket items that you wanna focus on on a home inspection. A lot of people still today, especially new home buyers, they get lost in the cosmetics of a property. So that they get focused on like one little crack, right? And they're not worried about the hole in the roof or the the really old AC unit, the 12-year-old uh, the, the AC unit. And we're trying to let them know, be like, hey, you want to budget for these things. And we try to train our home inspectors to let them know that, hey, this is coming close to the end of their life. So even as an agent or a home inspector, we try to let them get them an the understanding of what, what's expensive and what's frivolous uh, during a home inspection. Again, the purpose of the inspection, it's uh, what a lot of people, like I said before, get lost in is the cosmetic defects of things. So a home inspector isn't there to document torn wallpaper or actually damaged carpet. We will, you know, because that's the way the market, what the market expects us. But say he misses like a crack, right? That's not the purpose of a straight crack anyways. <laughs> the purpose of a home inspection. The purpose of the home inspection is major items, major water leaks, major foundation issues. Your equipment is failing or at the end of its life. So we're, we're there for thousands of dollars, not like a, a $100 patch fix. But as you notice, uh, if you're in the field or have gone through a deal, if you get a home inspection report, they're 60 pages long because we like to what we like to call a CYA. We actually can get away with like an eight page report, but we like to cover our ass, right? So, you know, so uh, that's the reason why our reports are so long because we try to give you as much information as possible. But what you're gonna start seeing is home inspectors like to stay at the end of the inspection report and we like to go over what's important uh, with your client and you guys too, if you're, at, if you're there at the end. Uh, James will talk to you about this too. It depends on your brokerage, 
uh, but some brokerages tell you not to show up, and then some say it's okay. But uh, some, most of my top producing agents, I have seen them hang out there at the end, listen to what the home inspector is say, and then they help them make decisions on what's important in that inspection report because there's just so much detail in it uh, when it comes down to it. A lot of people are surprised by this, but what's not covered uh, by the inspection is uh, lead, asbestos, mold, and radon. All of those are actually another license. Uh, they're held by a different uh, comp environment company. Uh, man, I should know this one. It's a Texas Department of, I think it's agriculture, but I'll have to get back to you on that one. Uh, my wife is actually better with that stuff. Um, and then the next one that you really want to pay attention to, you probably are going to hear this in uh, your lifetime of being an, a real estate agent, anything buried, hidden, latent, or concealed. And this actually happens. I mean, out of 2,000 houses, every now and then it happens. Someone is like remodeling a home, they rip out a bathtub and they're like, hey, there's termites underneath this bathtub. Why didn't you catch it? All right, and then I'm always like, well, let me repeat this back to you real quick. <laughs> just so we're, we're clear. And then they get mad at me sometimes. But, but it's just like, we can't see behind things. We don't have x-ray vision. It's a, just a general visual performance of the inspection. So while we're there, if there's furniture, there's big paintings, there's rugs all over the floor. We're actually not allowed to touch any of that. We can get to what we can get to. And I mean, like if it's not gonna hurt anything, we might move a few boxes to get to what we need to. But when you're talking about touching other people's things, we're not allowed to do it. So uh, that's why when we send out in our inspections, we let them know, like, hey, give us access to everything. You know, make think, sure things are opened up or make sure that we can get to things. So um, just something to be aware of if you have like a listing or if someone's about to come in and do a home inspection, you have like a hoarder of some sort, you wanna to try to coach them to let them know, be like, hey, you could be responsible for reinspection fees if the guy can't get to everything that he needs to. Such as like going to attics, I mean, it happens probably like once or, once or twice a month where we can't even get in the attic because someone left their car in the, in, the, in the garage, stuff like that. Risk reduction, it's, you know, we're coming out there, we don't care if they buy the property or not. It's an unbiased, opinion. We come out there, we tell them what's wrong with it, it is what it is, and then we, we let them know what's important on that inspection report and kind of go from there. Uh, so that being said, that's pretty much it. We, you know, we don't care if they buy it or not. <laughs> that's what a home inspector is. And if a home inspector seems to be, let's say, putting the icing on top of the cake, I guess, trying to help you guys get the deal, it's almost someone that you don't want to work with as much because, you know, that can come back to you guys. You're like, whenever they're making things. I understand there are home inspectors that make things seem too crazy where like a jiggly outlet and they're like, your house could burn down from that. You know, you don't obviously don't want to work with someone like that too. We just, it is what it is. It's broken, you need to fix it, right? So there are it's inspectors that are extreme, but there are inspectors that will make it look you know make a lipstick on a pig not seem that bad so you want to make sure that you work with someone that just gives you the cold hard facts and then y'all deal with the facts and then y'all just move forward uh, with the deal the so standards and practices we'll kind of hit this one lightly we operate underneath the same body you guys do of trek so we have standards and practices just like you do there's a bare minimum and the sad thing is if a home inspectors is the bare minimum is really minimum so you wanna make sure when you hire a home inspector that he's doing over the top. Like when I'm talking about bare minimum, the requirements is, is we only have to check one outlet in every room. We only have to operate one window. Um, we don't have to document like cosmetic defects. Um, so we're just there for performance based. So uh, they, there's, it really is minimum. So I can just go in and say, like, yeah, it's working. You know, so you wanna make sure that he's giving you extra details like how old stuff is, you know, is it working, is it not? Uh, the reason why it's broken, because we can just say it's not performing. And then be like, all right, go to the, go to the technician. You wanna be able to read that home inspection report, give that to an HVAC technician, and then him be like, just off the inspection report, be like, okay, yeah, that's what's wrong with it. This is how much it is. So the state mandated report form. So 
that's the same thing. You're gonna see the same report form. We have to go by this report form. It, it has to be in the same exact order. Foundation, grading, roof covering, roof structures, walls. We are required to follow this report form. And in this report form, what you see here, let's see if she did it, no, she didn't. Um, at these four check boxes at the top, it's eyes ins for inspected, NIs for not inspected, MPs not, for pre not present, and D is for deficient. So it's really, you normally look for that fourth checkbox, is that deficient checkbox. That means that we found something. You're gonna find a lot of home inspection reports that almost every single box checks D because code changes every three years and the home will, anything over three years is it gonna meet current code. So we're gonna find something. And that's where the rule of grandfathered comes in. That's when we're, that's the reason why we're performance inspectors. We're not really code inspectors. We let you know it's wrong, but I can also say, hey, this isn't installed to today's standards, but it's working. Like uh, an inspector commented just recently, he asked me, he's like, hey, it's a 19, it was like 1940s house and the primary AC drain line was going into the laundry, uh, the laundry drain. He's like, is that allowed? I was like, well, no, <laughs> but it's a 1940s house. Is it gonna hurt anything? Probably not. So it's going to work. It's no different than it going into a sink. So it's just, you, we have to bring in practicality. If you're buying a you know, 100 year old home, we want to make sure it's safe and is it working and then what do you have to expect out of fixing these items in a way. Uh, so that's the reason, that's what separates a, a code inspector from a general truck home inspection is performance or performance based. Just a, a same report form and the funny thing is that re page report form is only about six pages so we have, we are, have a magic power of turning six pages into 60 so. <laughs> so don't be alarmed if you get a 60 page home inspection report because actually most of those home inspection reports nowadays, they're all pictures. So that a whole page, several of the pages are actually just general performance pictures of just showing you that if your panel box is performing and there'll be five pictures of just the panel box showing that it looks good. You know, or, um, or the AC units. We like to take pictures of labels of the AC units and, and pictures of the HVAC system. So we can either go back and look at it again, or um, so just because it's you know a brand new house, our brand new house's pages are 30, 40 pages long, and it's just a general facts of showing you that it's working and it's installed right. This panel box was just fine, but you can see it takes up a whole page of me documenting a panel box, just showing you that every, everything is fine in there. The only thing that we did find wrong is, can't really read it, but I think the, uh, the bonding was loose somewhere out there and that's a brand new build. Oh, you can see it's a long, it's a pretty decent sized home inspection report. It's pro that's probably about 40 pages long and that's a brand new house. So what, what's the advantage of that is you can just take that and be like, all right, builder, here you go. <laughs> it's your job. This is um, the OPI form. I will get this out. Um, so this is the biggest thing that you want to remember about a home inspection report is no one's required to do anything at all. So I can come out there and tell you the house is going to burn down. You know, the panel box literally is burning at 270 degrees and it's dangerous. The seller is not required to do anything. The buyer is not required to do anything. It's just general information only. So it's, it's there to help them make a, a better home buying decision. So a lot of people think it's a negotiation piece and that you do use it as a negotiation piece. But remember, it can just be used as a general information piece and you wanna make sure they know that be like, hey, you can ask for these things, but they are not required to do anything at all. Uh, so if they come back and say no, I know you're, you're gonna to have to deal with that headache, <laughs> but there is a possibility they can and uh, they're, they're allowed to. All right, so really, if you take anything out of this class, this is the only spot you need to listen. And this will really like relieve a headache down the line like 100%. You need to make sure all the utilities are on. Because what happens is, is if we go out there and the gas isn't on, I actually had this conversation coming in, uh, the new build, the gas wa wasn't on and my inspector was doing his thing. And they're like, well, how much is it to come back? An average home inspection return fee just across the board in Houston is $200. 
And so they already paid $500 to do this home inspection. And then it's another $200 to come back, right? So then it's like, whose responsibility is it to pay for this reinspection? Is it the sellers? Is it the agents? Is it the, uh, is it the buyer? You know, like, so most of the time we just try to solve it. It, it. Like if there's a fight going on, I just go out there and swing out and knock it out. You know, it's just, but you want to just try to avoid that argument because it, it gets very heated very fast over uh, the $200 and the $200, the inspection company doesn't make any money off of that. It just takes a time slot. You know, it just pays the home inspector just to, for the time slot for that day and moves on. So it's, we're not, home inspection companies aren't gouging. We actually don't even want the reinspections, you know, but we, we knock them out anyways. It's just part of, it's part of the gig. <laughs> All right. So, um, that being said, do you all have any, uh, like, I think that's the halfway point, I'm not really sure, uh, but do you all have any questions about home inspections? I bet you had a question. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you know the answer, but because I do quite a bit of, of deals out in the country, so they have like the aerobic yep. systems and all that stuff. Um, how often are those supposed to be maintained? Because I've heard different things from different people. Well, that, that's a good question. And the reason why you hear different things from different people, because uh, it's how everyone treats their system. An aerobic system, if it's installed correctly and it's treated correctly, you should never have to touch it. But no one ever treats them right. What I mean, they treat them right? okay, so that's you know, to treat them right. The only thing that's allowed to go in there oh. is your waste yeah. and toilet paper. So you mean like hair and grease and you mean all those? Yeah, things. hair, grease, yeah. chemicals. You have kids; they destroy them. You know, like yeah. I mean, so if they're treated correctly. Um, you don't have to do anything about it. So since you live out in the, the sticks, mm -hmm. oh, I'm too <laughs> yeah. yeah, so the, you want this yeah, okay. yeah. I I grew up in Farmersville, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, I know about the septic systems and just what I like to say is, say we don't find anything wrong with it, right? And what I always like to say, it's still recommended to have them pumped out. Uh, because what I always like to say is take your poop with you, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> uh, so, you know, just let, you know, just start over, you know, get a fresh start on it. And it's always good to just kind of get all the junk out of there because we can look in there and we can tell you the sludge levels and we can tell you if it's performing properly or not. But most of the time, I say it's very rare. I say like one out of 10, they're perfect. You know, they, they, they don't have to do anything. But most of the time I find like sensor's not working right, sprinkler's not working right. So... Just if you're if you're dealing with aerobic systems often, you can either get a home inspector that's good at doing home inspections, or actually work really well with a septic system company. And and the septic system company, in my opinion, is the better way to go because they can come out and give you a a, a a a list of items and a number of how much stuff costs. So we're not allowed to tell you fees, but the septic system can be like, hey, this is six hundred dollars to fix, and boom, you have you have something to say that is six hundred dollars. Yeah, you know. So that's a good question. Yeah, and as, if you have a traditional system, it's probably good. <laughs> All right. Um, conclusion to the class. Uh, that class didn't have a lot of questions, which is okay. We don't know how long they've been in there, and uh, um, a lot of them did seem interested. Some not so interested, <laughs> which, which is. Which is okay. We, you know, they're probably they could be tired. This could be like a three-day class, and we're on the last day. Uh, but one of the things you want to remember is never discredit new agents, um, especially since you're a home inspector or whatever you're doing. You're going to be in this for you're going to be in this for the long haul. So new agents, you don't know which agent in that room is going to be the next top producer in Houston. It might take them a few years, but hey, it doesn't matter. And some people turn around and do it in a year. Uh, so, uh, you know, don't get worked up if people weren't asking a lot of questions. You probably made a difference. Just make sure that they, they get your phone number, they subscribe to your channel or something, and hopefully you taught them something new about the home inspection industry. Did you learn something new in the... Yeah, I always do every single time. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. All right. So that's good. Uh, if you like these types of videos, uh, please hit the like and subscribe button and uh, catch us on the next one. See you guys. <laughs>